Hello, hackers. Welcome to a new module in Poland College. Today, we're going to be talking about return-oriented programming. I am very excited about this module. Uh, ROP is a subject near and dear to my heart, um, and it'll be great to convey this information to you and hopefully make you as excited about ROP as I am. All right, quick recap before we dive into what is ROP. Um, if you recall, you've been uh, throughout this course um, running shellcode. In the shellcode module, you created shellcode uh, under various different constraints. You uploaded it, you executed it, you got the flag. Um, in the combination module, you put together memory corruption vulnerabilities that led to control flow hijacks with injected shellcode. And in most cases, we pretended that the mitigation known as uh, data execution prevention uh, implemented via the no execute bit in Linux it did not exist. Um, data execution prevention, of course, prevents your shellcode from executing in most places in memory. If you put it on the stack and try to jump to the stack, your program will simply crash because the stack is not executable. Um, there are very few programs that have an executable stack nowadays. It is mostly not required. The only real um, places outside of exotic embedded situations with small uh, resource constrained machines that might not have modern uh, execution prevent data execution prevention. Even then, most things do. Um, the only place where shellcode directly is still relevant is um, uh, in uh, just-in-time compilation engines, which you have now um, in the combination module also exploited. But those are situational. What if you're looking to break the security um, of something that is not a just-in-time compilation system. So um, if you are unable to inject code and, and execute it, then we turn to what is called code reuse. Um, this concept is actually quite old. Uh, in the old days of 32-bit um, x86, um, way back when, I think 64-bit architecture has been the standard for well over a decade now, but before then, um, on 32-bit x86, arguments were passed on the stack. Uh, so you have your um, stack uh, frame that, that might be familiar now. You have a vulnerable buffer. You have your saved uh, return ad, uh, saved base pointer, EBP, on 32-bit x86. Your return address, and then arguments to the vulnerable function, right? And, and, and this is literally you know, um, um, arg1, arg2, arg3, and so on. And just like in modern days, this would go into RDI on AMD64, RSI, RDX, and so on. All right, so this is how uh, things worked back then. You would push arguments to the stack and then you would call the function. Um, and what this meant is if you had a stack overflow, you could overflow not only the return address, but you could overflow um, uh, you could create what is called a call frame, create arguments uh, f for the code to which you redirected execution. So before execution, there would be the return address and the arguments immediately. Next, you could, would create, uh, instead, with the uh, um, vulnerability, you would create a... Um, You'd redirect, for example, the program to system. This would, when the one of a function returned, it would jump to system as if system was just called. So of course you need something to pretend to be the return address from system. And then when system looked for its arguments, they would be right there on the stack, controlled by you because of the stack overflow. Um, this is called return into libc. You override the return address with an address inside libc, specifically the address of system. Um, to accomplish your goals. It was um, discovered in the mid-90s by a hacker named Solar Designer. Uh, this hacker actually discovered quite a lot of um, exploitation techniques. We'll hear about him uh, in a later module again. 
Um, but in uh, the the mid nineties, uh, one of his claims to fame was the creation of Return to Lipsy um, in a um, mailing list post that basically said, "Hey, look, you know, I can bypass this sort of data execution prevention stuff that's coming around. We need um, to go beyond that." But this was in um, uh, back in the day um, in thirty uh, two bit x86 and that is just not what we're running anymore modern architectures don't take arguments on the stack in amd64 we have arguments going to rdi rsi etc if you overflow the stack and redirect execution to system you can't control what it actually executes right um but it turns out there are still um very useful things you can do and you've already in fact done them are taking the first steps in the memory errors module um, there was a win function to which you redirected execution by overflowing um, <clears throat> a vulnerable buffer and overriding the return address to point to uh, win right um, this is the beginning in this case you didn't need to pass an argument right there are in later levels of the memory errors module, we had um, a tricky win function that would actually, you would need to pass in an argument of 1337 or it would refuse to give you the flag. But obviously you figured out that actually if you control the return address completely, you can just jump right past that check partway through the function. Now we're taking another step to kind of advanced code reuse, right? So you reused part of a function. You can go even further. Um, and you have gone further by uh, performing a JIT spray attack in the first putting it together module um, in Toddler 1. Um, by jumping partway into an instruction, a nice benign looking instruction generated in, in the case of um, the previous module by a just-in-time compiler. But if you jump partway into the, that instruction, if the instruction is located at 1337000 and you jump to 1337002, start executing from here, you actually execute something very different. You execute, in this case, an exit syscall. Um, so that is uh, yet another step. And in this module, we will learn to take the rest of the steps to, toward what is known as return-oriented programming. It's a generalization of the technique of return to libc. It returns to anywhere. Um, it basically allows you to take the capabilities that you achieve by overflowing the stack, including the return addresses, being able to jump partway into instructions, partway into functions, etc., and chain these uh, returns one after another to achieve the goals that you want to achieve in exploitation. In this module, you'll learn all about this, you'll master it, uh, and you will truly be able to subvert a program, make it do something that it was absolutely, truly never designed to do by using its own binary code against it. Let's see what that looks like in the rest of the module.